Hello there, Aharon, Luke, Aslan's How Organics. This is our web webpage, aslans-how-organics.com. Our, our vision is to provide fresh seasonal organic produce to our friends in the community who need it most. Um, we take food stamps, we do a weekly CSA, try to um, have a teaching model to, um, with interns and uh, work share, skill share, stuff like that. Um, so we have a YouTube channel uh, right here. And we've been doing, I've been doing these how to videos, DIY. And we're now on the sixth one, which is going to be a comprehensive soil fertility background and um, how to prepare a remineralization of your soil. So instead of just getting big carrots, carrots that have are nutrient dense and taste amazing. So how do you do a, um, what's the history behind that? And how do you purchase inputs to make a fertilizer that, um, carrot that works with the soil? So you can see previously here, I had um, how to collect a soil sample and mail it off. And then um, a little bit on reading soil test results. These are kind of like as I was figuring this out. And then this this here too is how to buy um, fertilizer mix. And this is kind of like the first time I tried it. So this will be a, kind of an update on those. So got the presentation here. So soil fertility. Um, nutrient dense food, um, think like Odwalla carrot taste um, with, with the full um, health of uh, like a, a river delta soil that has a lot of, you know, um, minerals and is really well balanced from all the nutrients coming from the, from the mountains or like an ocean, reclaimed ocean delta, which was our first farm. Um, so, so fertility that kind of goal. Uh, so what kind of four parts to this presentation? First is the basics, you know, not everybody's going to be able to do a full um, fertilizer for themselves. Um, maybe there's a neighborhood soil analysis, maybe I could help you. Um, but because I buy a larger quantity of, of minerals, uh, inputs, to mix up something for your soil based on a soil analysis that you do. But there's also um, general complete organic fertilizers um, that are available that, that get you to the first point. Of, and so that would be concentrates or Steve Solomon has a recipe in his books, um, growing vegetables west, cascade, west of the Cascades. Uh, most, of, most of this basics is gonna be based on, uh, you know, Western approach. So uh, classic, uh, we take indigenous, we appropriate indigenous knowledge, like in this case out of uh, India originally for organic farming and um, own it and kind of twist it a bit and then kind of sell it back to India. So <laughs> uh, it, it, there is some bright spots, but it's funny how that happens. And so 19, 1873 was the start of the organic uh, movement, modern day organic. And then kind of going over like a &L Labs and Tigard, they are doing a bulk fertilization recommendation. They're not going to focus on all the um, trace minerals that maybe the body would be benefit from, but but um, doesn't necessarily give you a larger um, broccoli or whatever. And um, so then after that, we'll move into my story with the farms that I've had. Go over Steve Solomon's uh, worksheets on remineralization. And lastly, I'll kind of show you spreadsheet that I'm putting together for my 2021 fertilizer mix. If you have questions, uh, you can give me a shout. Um, we're at info at aslanshoworganic.com. So, you know, the starting point would be like, how do you determine clay, silt, sand? You probably heard of heard of these different terms. Um, they are based on particle size. So 
if it's a larger particle size, it's sand. If it's in between, it's silt. And if it's a big, uh, really small one, it's clay. And um, they have to uh, use a hydrometer, which is basically when it's too small to use a sieve to kind of get out these smaller particle um, diameters, they basically see how fast it falls, fall, uh, a mixture of it falls out. So they can watch that by like floating a, uh, floating a bobber in, uh, in the clay mixture and watching it over time. Um, so this is like this, this is like texture, right? Like this is going to have more texture than than the clay. Clay is pretty smooth when you feel it, and um, this matters because if you when you if you determine your soil has um, got a certain percentage of these, you can look about like how farmable is it? Like is that is that a spot if where if you don't want to bring in new soil, can you really farm there? Or what can you what can you do with it? Or maybe you have clay and you, you decide that you're going to um, augment it with organic matter because it's kind of compacted. So these are kind of like first order things before you even do a soils test. You got to understand what kind of soil you have. And so there is a pyramid that the USDA has. It's got 12 textural classes. And, you know, there's also something called the WRB, World Reference Base, that's uh, like a lot of different nations came together and um, uh, combined their different soil classifications and UK has their own too. So theirs only has 11. So um, this is this is usually the pretty basic starting point for determining what kind of soil you have. If you have clay loam, maybe a sandy loam. And uh, you don't have to use um, sieves and the um, hydrometer method I mentioned, you can actually do it by hand. A lot of people just go out and they do a, a hand extrusion um, on the next slide to kind of determine what, what kind of soil they have. So, so I think, well, I wanted, before I got into that um, extrusion test, the, uh, so the USDA NRCS soil survey started in 1894. It's the largest resource um, info database out there. And it tells you what kind of soil you have based on your, the GPS of your phone. And it'll give you a cross section. And they also give you farmability. So that you know, there's like a one, two, three rating. There's a scale online you can see. And then I just kind of listed the URL here. It's a UC Davis app that was built off of the um, NRCS web soil survey. So the web soil survey itself is just a web page and, and you type in your address, but this app is nice too. So here is the extrusion test. So basically you take your soil and you mix it with water slowly until you can get a, until it's like putty and you can get a ball that rolls in your hand and then you squeeze it. And if it doesn't even stay together, as a ball, then then you've got you can try some more mitigation, but then most likely you have, just have sand. There's no clay in there, and no silt. And then the next step is if it sticks together, you, it, you're going to see um, you're going to squeeze it between your fingers. There's a lot of videos out there you can do with this. And then you see how far it goes before it breaks off. So if it goes less than an inch, one to two inch or two inches or longer, um, then you're in these different categories. And then you kind of feel to see if it's gritty. And the grittiness here gets you into one of these 12 soil types. So this is fun. <laughs> and uh, I don't have anything else about that. I think that's most of what I want to say. Uh, the I didn't do that this year. I think I want to do it again, just kind of see where my soil is. But it's a little bit tricky to like get it to um, extrude. But like I said, there's a lot of good videos out there of people doing it. Um, this why does this matter? Why does um why did the USDA 
um, differentiate between clay silt, sand. Um, one of the reasons why is because clay has vastly different um, abilities to hold nutrients than sand. If you had something planted in sand, you would, you could put nitrogen right next to it. And if it wasn't like right on the roots, there's no transfer. It's not, the uh, soil is, is all sand. It doesn't actually transfer nutrients. So this is called the cation exchange capacity and your cation exchange capacity is zero. Over here, if you're a full, fully clay, heavy clay um, soil, you, you're probably gonna have issues with compaction. You, you're probably not gonna be able to uh, farm in it, work in it. But um, on a nutrients level, if you put, if you dumped a bunch of uh, fertilizer on there, the fertilizer would be able to travel throughout the soil and, it, and uh, move to roots because clay has lots of these uh, negative receptors on its surface, um, a lot more than, than um, pure sand. And um, these nutrients, these um, elements that are, um, that the plant needs are positively charged cations. So that's why it's called cation exchange. And so mm -hmm. these cations can move to the roots of the plants when you, when you have clay. So this is kind of a starting point for thinking about uh, remineralization and making sure that your soil is healthy so that your plant is healthy as opposed to just dumping liquid nitrogen or liquid um, elements that just kind of go straight to the root and and bypass even using the soil at all. So in the organic process you think about the soil and whether or not it can transfer nutrients. So here's this guy I was talking about. Uh, Sir Albert Howard, and he's, he's the guy that went to India. He saw the Vedic agricultural practice, which was, you know, diversified farming, lots of manure, and they also did green manure. So they would like, if they did a cereal, they would plant vetch or plant a legume in there with it, which is nitrogen fixing. And a lot of these things hadn't been adopted by uh, European farmers yet. Then European farmers had monocropping, they had poor soil, poor soil fertility, and maybe not, not um, nitrogen fixing. They didn't understand about legumes fixing nitrogen. So uh, Vandana Shiva thought he was an honest man. I was looking into it and he also saw that they had low pest pressure um, in addition to those other things I said. And he was there to, you know, to extract more for England, of course. Um, his book is called An Agricultural Testament. Um, he wrote it like um, 150 years ago now. And in it are the Vedic agricultural observations, which um, no farm in India is a monoculture, one of them, one main one, and the second one no farmer in India plants a cereal without a legume, like I was saying. So, which, which sadly then gets appropriated by the West, owned by the West, t twisted by the West, and then sold back to India for like maybe like some kind of uh, organic fertilizer uh, export or something that they need to buy to do their farming. So, the next guy is William Albrecht. And this a uh, professor at University of Missouri, he started looking into cattle health and he saw that it, it was based on location. So as he looked at, at different locations, he looked at the legumes and the grasses and he wanted to know what was different between this, these different um, inputs. And so he proposed that what he saw was a, there was an ideal balance of, of these um, elements, these cations that are in the soil. So, you know, 10% hydrogen, 60 to 75% calcium, um, et cetera, et cetera. So if we go back up here to 
this. So just having a bunch of elements in the soil is good. But if you have a certain percentage of sodium as, as um, opposed to everything else, there's a sweet spot where things really, really start humming that, that he figured out based on um, cattle health. And so Steve Solomon, uh, the, the expert that, that I'm following for soil fertility, um, he's, he's taking from this tradition here. And if you're kind of focusing on cation balance, cation balance, then you might you might not just focus focus on pH because pH could be you could just have a whole bunch of calcium and nothing else, um, and and not have a balanced soil. So it's kind of a different like the next step after just a pH, and and this this allows for this cation exchange capacity. Um, so here's Steve. So Steve Solomon, if, if you've heard of territorial seeds, he started that in 79. And um, he was trying to live off the land. So when you do that, if you don't go to the grocery store as much, you actually have to have proper mineralization in your plants. Otherwise it can it affect your teeth, it can affect your body because most of what we're doing is just like augmenting uh, Safeway with all of the, you know, extra vitamins and minerals they put into foods by a, a factory. So if you're living off the land, which he was, his teeth started going uh, bad, got, got getting loose. So um, in 1984, when he was vacationing in Fiji in the Sagatoa Toka Valley, um, he was eating produce out of the valley and that was a river delta and it was mineral rich uh, food and his actually on his vacation his teeth started solidifying in his mouth so uh, that started him off on like doing his homework on remineralization and not just the complete mm -hmm. organic fertilizer not just the general purpose fertilizer but really looking at the, um, the mineral uh, content so his in 2014 he released the was the uh, date on the Intelligent Gardener book, which is the book that um, you need if you're going to do this method. And so uh, his premise is like few soils are balanced. Most of them are not balanced. And the book provides a excellent beginner's entry into soil science and challenges some of the organic movements, tightly held assumptions about sustainable crop production and um, you know just just adding manure for example organic manure or um, just focusing on um, um, size of the produce as opposed to um, nutrient dense so here's this book the intelligent gardener and here's the back um, he recommends a neighborhood soil analysis um, so this could be a simple, straightforward, small business if, if um, our community started getting going on small diversified nutrient dense farming, somebody in the community is kind of like the soil labs person. Um, I'm, I'm willing to offer that service. Uh, I don't actually know how to do it yet, but uh, I'd, I've been buying a lot of extra uh, materials. So uh, give us a shout if you're in the... Uh, Southeast Portland area. So my story, uh, Aslan's How Organic, so kind of, you know, the ability to talk to life uh, in, in farming. And then of course, the uh, death and resurrection of Aslan as, and how he thawed Narnia just as a great picture of death and life that we see in agriculture all the time. So I started off in Bow. I was actually organic collective farm. It was great soil was reclaimed sea, sea with a seawall, sea, sea soil with a seawall there in River Delta. And I just basically did um, um, liming and manure, organic manure. And then when I moved to Oregon, I tried some permaculture stuff. I didn't know what I was doing. Everything died. And then I just kind of went straight to 
um, a and Labs recommendation, which is a, kind of like a bulk up uh, sizing thing. So um, I'll show you that in, in contrast to the, uh, like the, the recommendation as well as the soils tests are different for these different methods. You might use different labs. So we'll go over both of those. And then um, this past couple of years, I've been doing the remineralization approach to soil fertility, maximize density for body health. We are organic, so um, diversified annual crop. A lot of a lot of uh, organic farmers are smaller and are, are diversified. There is with within organic, you can do a lot of stuff that's pretty unhealthy for a land, um, like uh, large scale monocropping that's organic with with there's allowable spring even you can do so, but there's lim it's not as bad as a conventional, they use better inputs. This is the OMRI listing, you know, better manufacturing. So if they are doing spraying, they would be better, more, um, less aggressive spraying that would um, affect the soil biology impacts on humans and earth, no GMOs. So some of these basics and then USDA does want the farmer to think about um, soil health. So they're gonna recommend uh, you have to publish your, um, your, your strategy for keeping the soil. So like, you know, cover cropping, um, green manure, rye veg, like um, cereal rye, cereal um, legume, like, like the Vedic approach. And then you're not going to be using synthetic fertilizer like um, from fossil fuel which, which shocks the soil. They want you to build the soil to so be like um, blood meals, feather meals, stuff like that would be organic. And keep an eye on organic matter, limiting tilling uh, and worms, uh, biology around worms. And so, and then there's a lot of documenting and inspecting. So that's something we've done. We continue to do. And uh, Steve Solomon's re remineralization, the philosophy behind that is I don't overlook any elements plants can pick up because even if the plants don't seem to require them, your body does, which is a great point. Creating soil fertility is not about more, it's about achieving balance. So it was that cation exchange and the balance in the soil and, and the health of the plants is um, is, is, uh, is uh, amazingly interlinked with the health of the soil. Um, like for you know, reli reliability, um, being able to weather, to, to have a low pest pressure, to, to be able to be, uh, have your farm be able to withstand, um, uh, you know, like changing climate that if you have if you don't have a, a strong root, then it's not going to be able to withstand um, something that happens. This, this last one, present the plants and soil ecology with a lux luxurious abundance of everything they need except potassium. And I think Steve is saying that, he says the potassium makes it um, grow tall. So to try to like not have it, um, just be bulked up with nothing in it, but to really have that nutrient density means you don't overdo potassium. So that's his basic philosophy, some, one of some of his basic philosophy. And he says the six, ele the six elements here, calcium, magnesium, potassium, sodium, sulfur, and phosphorus are the main cation balancing elements that, that you can really, you really can dial in on, you know exactly what you have and what your target is. And so that'll be in his soil fertility mix. Um, these next ones can mostly be targeted, um, but are harder to um, determine the right quantity. So uh, these boron, iron, copper, zinc, and mag manganese are trace elements. And then this up here is actually ANL's lab. So this is more like a bulk focus. And so they don't even have these um, elements that humans can digest, but a plant wouldn't use. They, uh, the conventional fertility scheme would consider these not uh, unnecessary because the plant doesn't actually do anything with it. You're not gonna get a bigger plant. So 
But um, Steve's point is the human actually consumes uh, can and can use these um, elements. So here is the worksheets. So Steve in his appendix has, um, I think three different worksheets. Uh, first one is the soil report. So this is from his, the lab that he works with. So he works with one in I think Ohio. So this, is, this was my soil result from this year. I sent it to this um, Logan Labs in Ohio. And they sent me back this PDF here. And it has, you know, here is uh, this um, cation exchange capacity right here, 14. And organic matter, pH, and then, you know, they have, they just list based on remineralization, you know, anions, exchangeable cations base saturation. Uh, these trace elements that I was mentioning. So this result is, is called the M3 test. Here, there's a MOLEC3 right here. So um, Logan Labs has a web page. They tell you how to take the sample and how, and they use this method that um, Steve is recommending. So he, has a, he works with them. And then here is the here's the other lab in Tigard, A and L Labs. So when when I compare these two um, soil test results, they're pretty similar, except for some of these trace minerals are uh, different. So, and then this recommendation, of course. So this is their recommendation, and then I use. Steve's calculator to make a recommendation that's going to, and it has a lot more of these trace elements. So I'll show you like a spreadsheet. We use to pull this together in a second. Um, in the appendix of Steve's book, the next one is this acid soil worksheet. So assuming you have an acidic, there's a non-acidic um, worksheet, but this is for a typical, you know, 6.5 pH or something. And uh, I guess that he says right there, the divide is at 7, 7.0, so below 7.0. And then here is where you actually enter the actual level that you have in your soil, your target um, based on his calculations here. Um, and then you have, then you enter your deficit, like what you need to add to your soil. And um, here, the last spreadsheet is where it's what you need to add to your soil. And then all you're, you're gonna list out all of your inputs and the way you're gonna get that, the, that um, like sulfur, for example. And usually your input you buy from concentrates is gonna have a little bit of sulfur in multiple products. So you just kind of keep a tally here and you add up how much sulfur you have from different, from all the different inputs you have to add, mix together. So this is like, I usually just do this in a wheelbarrow and I have like a scale where I'm measuring stuff out um, based after I kind of figure out how much I need of this raw material to get this um, pounds per acre deficit of an element over here. And they give you like some breakdowns of uh, nutrients and typical um, inputs. You, and usually you'd want to look at, look on the side of the bag to get the actual um, percentages. Um, but if you didn't have that, you could, this is a good rough approximation. All right, so the last thing here, uh, I wanted to show you the actual fertilization mix. So I'm using Solomon's approach last year um, the calculator that my buddy gave me um, had, wants this this uh, kind of pounds per acre, 140 pounds per acre of nitrogen, you know, 1.6 pounds per acre of boron, and then you got to use the um, the next spreadsheet, you know, based on your inputs to figure out how much of uh, this general purpose fertilizer that's you know NPK. 
four, 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 how much you're going to pour that into your wheelbarrow with mixed with everything else to get this ratio that you can mix together. So um, that's a cool spreadsheet I'll show you. And then this is the same guidelines from the same soil sample, but from a conventional uh, a and labs. And so you can see right away, there's more trace minerals. There's some of these are not recommended at all. And and then when they when there is trace, they're like you know three to zinc is three times more, manganese is five times more. So he's really um, trying to make sure the plant has enough to go from here. All right, so let's um, cut over to the spreadsheet that kind of inc incorporates Solomon's three spreadsheets. And I think got it ready. All right. So this is, so if you can see here in the top, Logan lab test results. So this first tab is the test results. Second tab is the acid soil worksheet. So that's, you know, how much, how much deficit do I have based on Solomon's remineralization cal calculations. This next tab is how much I already have from last year of, of uh, inputs that I've bought, you know, different fertilizers, lime, sun grub, potting soil, gypsum, calphos, 0180, et cetera. And then the concentrate order is the main spreadsheet I wanna show you, but we'll start with this. So this is basically just, I entered this off of Logan Labs results they sent me and then um, if the if it gave me parts per million, then this is like pounds per acre. So you just um, pounds per acre divided by two is parts per million. It's pretty uh, simple, but all of the stuff going forward is pounds per acre. So all of these I had to convert to from parts per million. There's also these um, general guidelines so you, I kind of can see the difference, I was noting the difference between a &L and Logan. I was noting these general guidelines and um, trying to be thorough with things on Steve's spreadsheet. The next one is this calculation. So, you know, there, there, is, there is these targets. So it says the amount of sulfur you want in your, in, on, your on your garden, in pounds per acre is equal to half of the magnesium target until no cation ex excess exists. So, you know, here's my, here's my actual level and which to get this target, I would take the TCEC, which is that 14 value times 240 times 0.12, and so that would be the value I would have here, and this would be half of that. So I'm still working through this. I'll get my target, and then um, my deficit would just be, you know, the actual, or the target minus the actual to see how much I need to add in. And these are some inputs I already have. Last sheet here. So I would take um, the pounds per acre. No, I would take what you just saw, and that would be my target right here. So I want to get these pounds per acre of these uh, elements here um, on the on this row. And so what I'm going to do is I know that these inputs from concentrates have these percent compositions. So I know here's like a, a organic fertilizer. It's a 
it is a a six four three. So I know if I have one pound of this, six percent of that pound is going to be actual nitrogen. Um, four percent will be P, and three percent will be K. And so that that is reflected over here. So if I put a one right here, it's just going to times that through and put in the proper amount. Let's try it. One here. And then these guys have to be let's see. I need to change this. Oh, here we go. Okay, yeah. So you can see here, if I had one pound of this um, input from concentrates, I'd have 0 0.06 pounds of nitrogen, no sulfur. Uh, I'd have 0 0.04 um, P, and then I'd have K right here. So that'd be. 0 0.03 if I was to adjust the uh, precision of this cell. So, so this, uh, the cayenne here is how much you're going to do per, for pounds per acre right here. The uh, light, the tan here, or the light gray is the source nutrient composition makeup. And then the dark, Gray is the actual amount of all of the all of these different uh, sources are going to have varying amounts of of p, and so you're keeping track of the actual pounds per acre, and you're adding that up with with all of your inputs down here. So what you're trying to do is balance your proposed totals that you're getting as you mix, change this mixture to your actual targets here, that, and see in this. This last row is just kind of like a target difference where you're driving it to zero. And so it's kind of like a, you know, an iterative process of just deciding what you can purchase from concentrates and how you would mix that in. And I think that's uh, most of what I wanted to show you here. The, over here on the far left, I keep track of, of, um, like cost or something, you know, like something else. So, so uh, soil fertility, um, uh, don't just use manure because that's that's gonna be a local input that, that, that has limited remineralization. Um, if we need to actually as a society live off the land, we need to have mineral dense food that's um, Got a healthy soil so it can be more resilient. Um, give me a shout. Uh, thanks a lot. Take care. Bye.